from certain characters to certain rides and even some super weird water slides. We've got 13 of the creepiest things in Disney parks for you today on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and sometimes you want to be a little bit aware of some things you could run into in the Disney parks. Whether your kids might be scared of a few specific things or a few passages in certain rides, or you yourself might be a little freaked out by some stuff, we've got 13 creepy things, or at least they may be creepy to you, to watch out for in Disney parks. First up, number one on our list is Caesar. Now, raise your hand if you know who I'm talking about when I say Caesar. So this super creepy ventriloquist dummy from Tower of Terror has got to be on your list of creepiest things in Disney World. He may be scarier than the drops themselves. Tower of Terror is filled with lots of Easter eggs from the Twilight Zone series itself. You'll spot little nods like the elevator inspection certificate dated October 31st, 1939, which is of course the night of the incident. And you'll also note the certificate is numbered 10259, which stands for October 2nd, 1959, the day the first Twilight Zone episode aired. But there's also lots of props in Tower of Terror, including the ventriloquist dummy from the episode Caesar and Me, where that dummy, who you'll see when you exit the elevator, is possessed by an evil spirit. Plus, ventriloquist dummies are just kind of creepy on their own. Next, and this is something to look out for with your kids, there's lots of stuff in Haunted Mansion that's a little bit creepy to a lot creepy. So we'll just hit on a few of the bigger ones. Now, note if you're watching with kiddos, we are going to probably talk about some scary-ish concepts here, so be prepared for that, spoiler alert. Uh, as soon as you enter the mansion, you're standing in the stretching room, which can be scary for kiddos since the lights go out. There's screaming, of course, uh, but keep an eye on where that cast member who brought you into the room went. They're some of the most in-character cast members, and they take creepy to the next level. So if you feel eyes on you in that stretching room, it's probably not a ghost, but a cast member standing right behind you and staring at you always creeps me out when they do this to me in the stretching room so I always I even sometimes will face outward so they can't do it to me next creepy thing our ghost host who so graciously shows you his way out of the mansion through of course suicide has a portrait where you'll note the rope around his neck and that he's holding an axe because he cut himself down from the rafters things kind of mellow out from the downright scary until you get to the attic so the bride has many husbands and keeps portraits and wedding gifts from each of her weddings. You'll notice that the grooms get decapitated or disappear, and if there's a his and hers gift, his is always broken. Plus, she's standing there with a bloody axe. So we'll go back to the dancing ghosts in the ballroom, thank you very much. Another super creepy ride, to me at least, is Snow White's Scary Adventures. Now we know this used to be in Disney World and has been turned into a meet and greet at this point, but it still is in Disneyland's Fantasyland. And this is probably one of the creepiest rides ever. It's very dark and morbid. There are skeletons in cages. And these aren't just funny skeletons like you see on Pirates of the Caribbean. These are creepy skeletons. And then of course there's that evil queen as the terrifying hag. So I've ridden this ride a couple of times myself by myself at night, maybe right after the fireworks when nobody else is really riding it at all. And I get really kind of creeped out and really scared when we're going through that section where you're in the middle of the forest. It is really scary and, and my imagination tends to run wild. So it's definitely Snow White's scary adventures. Note that at this ride, the evil queen also looks over guests from the window above the ride, which is a little bit creepy to see. You can spot her best if you're standing back a bit closer to Peter Pan's flight and she peeks out from behind the curtains to spy on guests every 20 to 30 seconds or so. Now let's talk about a particular meet and greet that can be very creepy, especially for little ones. And this is probably the most off-putting meet and greet you'll experience at a Disney park, and that's Kylo Ren. Don't expect handshakes, high fives, or a selfie from him. He's in character, and that means he's intimidating and kind of rude. So be ready to hear about some rebel scum. And if you do want a friendly, more classic Disney meet and greet, Chewbacca is right next door. Another thing that's kind of creepy at Disney World, at least to those of us on the DFB team, 
is how much Disney is tracking you with My Disney Experience. So if you have My Disney Experience running on your phone, Disney knows where you are at all times. And we've gotten push notifications and pop-ups welcoming us to the Magic Kingdom or suggesting we go to a nearby restaurant or ride because they know exactly where we are. So even if you don't have it running, if you've planned any part of your trip on My Disney Experience, which obviously you have, Disney's got tabs on where you'll be eating and what you'll be riding. And if you're making purchases with a linked Magic Band, all that data is getting funneled into metrics so Disney World can keep up on purchasing patterns of their guests. Now, there's really no way around linking FastPass to your ticket or room reservation, and advanced dining reservations will still require a credit card guarantee to hold a reservation even though you call it in. But you can opt not to link a card to your Magic Band for payments. Next thing that's pretty creepy in the Disney parks, Pirate George. So Pirates of the Caribbean is such a quintessential Magic Kingdom ride, would you believe it almost didn't exist there? Yeah, the ride had been a favorite in Disneyland, but there were no plans to bring it to Florida as it was assumed Florida was too close to the Caribbean already to garner any interest in the attraction. But guests voiced their displeasure at not having an East Coast version of the ride, and by the end of 1973, Magic Kingdom had their own iteration. Now, rumor has it that a welder named George died while working on the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. And now, as far as we know, this one is just a rumor, but cast members say that his ghost haunts the attraction and can wreak havoc and shut down the ride if you don't greet him every morning. Now, another thing that I find super creepy is the Space Mountain Ghost Galaxy overlay over in Disneyland. So Space Mountain can be a little scary if you're not a fan of rides in the dark, but if you want to up the creepy factor, try riding one of the seasonal and special event overlays of the ride. So Ghost Galaxy happens happens in Disneyland and Hong Kong Disneyland, and there's a spooky soundtrack, galactic ghosts. It actually kind of freaked me out a little bit when I wrote it. I, I thought it was just going to be fun and funny, but it was a little weird for sure, um, and I don't really want to ride it again. And also in Magic Kingdom, during the Villains After Hours event, Space Mountain is in complete pitch black darkness with a villain soundtrack with screaming and evil laughter, so be prepared for that if you're there with the kiddos. Now, one of my favorite creepy things to talk about in Disney World, you guys know I've talked about it on the channel before, is that Boardwalk Nanny Chair. So the Boardwalk Inn is home to some seriously weird things, and the weirdest probably are these creepy doll chairs, or nanny chairs as they're more historically termed. So you could find these chairs on 19th century carousels so that nannies could take a seat while the kids would ride the horses. And these chairs are cast from original chairs found on those carousels, and they're hand painted by Imagineers. Now these super creepy chairs actually have names on the back of them. There's Todd, Paul, Alex, and Carrie. So you never know who you're gonna see up in the lobby of the boardwalk, but there's usually only two chairs in the lobby, which means there's two other chairs somewhere else in the boardwalk. Usually they're down in a lower walkway, but you really never know where these are gonna turn up. And if that's not creepy enough at the boardwalk, head out to the pool and check out that clown slide. That water slide creeps a lot of people out, especially at night when the eyes start to glow. Another thing that some folks find kind of creepy, now I personally love these guys, but some people find them creepy, are the Roasty Toasties in Disneyland. So you either think they're cute or creepy, I'm on the cute side, you can let us know in the comments what you think, um, and you'll find them at popcorn carts all over Disneyland. So they rotate the popcorn drums to help quote unquote cook the popcorn, and are themed to each land. You'll find a Yeti near the Matterhorn, the Rocketeer in Tomorrowland, and a creepy dead guy near the Haunted Mansion. Now during holidays or special events, you may see the Roasty Toasties dressed up, or you may see them switched out for a different character altogether. Now speaking of the Yeti at the Matterhorn, the Yeti himself is about as scary as Disco Yeti on Everest, although this one actually moves without the assistance of strobe lights. But the real creepy part is the screaming. So even when you walk past the Matterhorn, you can hear Yeti screams coming from the mountain. When you're being jostled around in the dark, those screams can be really, really ominous. Next up, let's talk about Jungle Cruise. Now, I know you're gonna say, AJ, there's nothing creepy about Jungle Cruise, but I have ridden Jungle Cruise with a scared little kid, and let me say that there are a couple of things there that you need to be aware of from a creepy factor. So the temple that you pass through once you enter the Mekong River is pretty dark and ominous, and there's kind of weird, creepy music playing. So the only light you have is the headlight on the boat, which of course shines on spiders and snakes and everything you don't want to find in a decaying temple. 
So be prepared for that little section. A lot of people don't think that Jungle Cruise can be scary, but to little kids who are a little bit anxious or nervous, that particular section can indeed be a little bit scary. So prepare them for that. And just before the ride ends, you meet Trader Sam, who as we all know, has a great deal running right now. The two for one special, two of his heads for one of yours. And who'd expect decapitation to be featured in two classic Disney attractions, right? But there it is. And finally, being alone in the parks late at night. So I know you're not gonna have this experience very often, but when you're used to the parks being super crowded, it can be very unnerving to find yourself alone. Definitely a very creepy part of the after hours events we were not expecting. So if you're at, say, Magic Kingdom after hours or Animal Kingdom after hours, and there's not a lot of other people there, and there are some areas where you'll go that you're pretty much the only person there, it can be very unnerving nerving and kind of creepy because it is pretty dark. There isn't a lot of extra light. You start to realize how big those parks are. So one of the creepiest things I experienced was going through the flight of passage queue line with nobody else there. Now, first off, there's always a wait, so it feels like something is wrong when nobody's there. Plus that queue is kind of dark and creepy and twisty and turny anyway. So you don't really know how a lot of it looks like scenes from a horror film until you're the only one in there. So be prepared at those after hours events if you're not going through the fast pass line and instead going through the regular queue. It can be super creepy if you're there by yourself. You never know what's around the next corner. So we want to hear from you guys. What do you think is creepy in Disney parks? What should our viewers be prepared for to tell their kids about and make sure that they're wary of maybe if there's anything creepy you found or spotted in the Disney parks? As always, you guys, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Block and we'll see you real soon.